Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. This, this is a weekly channeling video, and today we are going to be talking with Karen Carpenter in the afterlife. If you are new here, um, welcome. And you should know or you should be aware that this is not your typical psychic channeling. Um, two things I want you to be aware of as you're watching this particular video. First of all, I don't do any advanced research. I don't check out any details. I don't Google. I don't wiki. And that might frustrate you, especially if you're a diehard fan and you know all the details. But the point of the channeling that I do is to connect and communicate with the spirit. It's not to reiterate or regurgitate their biography or their life all the details that we already can find out if we want to, right? It's more for the organic and authentic experience of communicating with the spirit in the afterlife. So you get to watch me have a conversation with, in this case, Karen Carpenter in the afterlife and, and see it be very authentic and very real human to spirit connection. All right. So the second thing is then details and stuff. Sometimes, yeah, I mess that stuff up. I do. I misinterpret because that's what human beings do. We misinterpret or misunderstand some of the information that we get. And I get my information a lot through the clairvoyance channel. I'm very visual, so I do a lot of description, which might drive you crazy if you don't like that. But that's my style, and that's what you can expect here at Above Life Channel. So if you know some details, if I misinterpret something, or if I get something just plain wrong, 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 please, you are invited to make comments and to fill in the blanks, to add more information if you choose to, because you, if you are a fan, you know much more than I do. And so you can enhance the value of this experience for everyone if you participate. You can do that in the comments below. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here, and let's get started with Ms. Karen Carpenter. All right, so I am going to share, Karen, that um, your energy is very soft. She's very gentle. Uh, I would say I would describe you as shy, but I think it's just perhaps this is new. This is a different energy um, experience for you and for me as well. Her vibration for everyone watching is very, I would describe as mellow, very, very just gentle. There's a, such a softness, uh, a stillness about her energy vibration. And I just, easy, it's easy to be around her. She's quite likable and friendly, friendly, but, but it's very soft spoken, which is totally the opposite of Bridget. So this will be an interesting channel. You see how, can you feel? I hope you guys can all feel as you're watching, feel the energy. That's clairsentience, the psychic gift of sensing feeling. And you have that too. That's what we call being a sensitive person or being empathic, being an empath. Everyone is that. Everyone is that. So take a moment to just feel Karen's energy. Just feel the genuine, gentle energy that she has coming through. Allow that energy to connect with you as well. So do you feel that softness? It's very soft. Thank you so much. I, I, I feel as though in human life, perhaps like interviews and things would not really be comfortable for you. Is that correct? And she says, no, no, not at all. Um, not too much, she says, not too much. And she recognizes right away she's very connected to her brother, um, who she was in her group with, obviously. But she's very connected to her brother, and she's, she recognizes that he was the one that kind of kept things together. And, um, and so he was her rock, is how it feels. So she's acknowledging him. So I'm gonna, and, and then I kind of see like an interview, almost like on... Um, like a morning show or something. You know how like nowadays it would be like the Today Show or Good Morning America or something. Kind of like that. Like I see her and her brother being interviewed on a show like that um, just with one other person and just a really small set. 
and just talking a little bit about um it says the tour in the album is what she's talking about and she said it was right after the grammys grammy so i assume you won a grammy grammy is the music award yes and um, songwriting, she says, one of her, she's sharing that one of her prides or one of the things that she feels is, is, and she's saying her greatest accomplishments was songwriting is what she's saying, songwriting, writing songs. And she's, so she's showing me like this big award ceremony thing and she's holding this thing. And it's weird because it doesn't look like a Grammy. I think the Grammy is the one that has kind of like the, the little gold kind of speakeasy type looking thing, you know, phonograph kind of thing. Um, but what you're showing, what I can see with her is like a, a glass kind of a thing, um, almost like a people's choice kind of thing or a recognition from others in the music industry or um, uh, something like that. Like I see something that looks different. It's more pointy. <laughs> so it's funny. It's more pointed. Um, it's almost like a big, like a, not an obelisk, but a tall triangle type looking thing. And it looks like it's glass or it's shiny. It could be metal. I could just see the reflection, but um, something like that. And writing, like she's talking to me about writing. Like I'm, she's making me um, feel how special that is to her, how important it is. And she says, it's, some, it's the legacy that you leave. She says, it's the legacy. It's my legacy. So, Karen, in some of your songs, and so in preparation for this channeling, I listened to a few of your songs while I was getting ready in the bathroom, and uh, I felt like your songs have this kind of a mood about them, some of them that I was listening to, had kind of this mood about them, this energy about them, that speaks toward like the energy of, um, there's like a sadness you know, like a loss, like a missing out on love and um, a sadness, like I, I'm missing, missing, like I'm missing someone, I'm missing someone. And it's not about heartbreak, but it's about heartache, like the absence of someone or, or feeling very lonely. It also kind of feels like there's like this depression energy that kind of encircles, uh, is danced around even in the lyrics too, but the, the way that kind of energy kind of s softly rocks you back and forth and brings you into this, uh, like, it's okay, everything, it's okay. You know, you can get through this kind of an energy. And maybe that's just a reflective of the time, but I noticed that. Did you want to speak to that or is there something you can share? Is that an accurate description? She says, yes, I just, I simply wrote about, you know, we write about what we are experiencing and what we feel. And that's probably the most important thing as a songwriter and, and as a, a performer to do is to share what, what you're really experiencing and knowing that others can also relate to that in some way maybe you give them the strength to go on to keep going and to keep living and to know that while they may feel lonely and there are times when you just feel so alone that that's not the end of it that's not the end Hmm. All right. Um, so I know in my mind, my brain can recall that you struggled with um, anorexia or bulimia, perhaps both like eating disorders, and that that was the ultimate uh, contributor to your death. Is that correct? And she says, yes, yes. Is there something that you can talk to us about or share with the viewers about that process or that experience living with that I mean is that something that I mean was it a health thing was it a mental health thing what is it what was that like describe that what it was like to struggle with that and she says first and foremost 
it was a disease. And one would argue that it most certainly is in the mind, although it starts there, but it ends in the body. And it's, it's sort of graphic to say, but it's, it's as though your heart lit, quite literally rots. There's a corrosion that happens and well, that doesn't sound very pretty. Uh, it's, it's actually quite painful. And although others, uh, but this is the truth. She said, this is true, but this is what's, this is what is true. This is my reflection sharing. She wants to be clear. This is my reflection. She says, sharing with you for those of you who have struggled with this and can relate or, or have loved ones who have or are. Perhaps it can give you some help, uh, some bit of advisement or understanding. It's not something that is vain. It's not a vanity. And it's not, it's not even an insecurity. For me, it wasn't about my appearance. It wasn't about wanting to be pretty or beautiful. It was, for me, it was not about those things. I would say, knowing what I know now as a, <laughs> as a soul, you know, enlightened soul, she says, and then she smiles and leans back a little. She says, as an enlightened soul, knowing what I know now, it's, it's pretty clear that the deterioration of the body, the decay, she says the word decay, the decay of the body was simply an outward reflection of how I felt on the inside. And it's no one's fault, no one's fault. I, I want to be very upfront that no one could have saved me necessarily. There's not a, there's so much, you know, it's so difficult because there's so many uh, questions that you, ha you have naturally as a person in reflection and, and looking at, uh, watching someone else go through that. So I'm referring to my family and my friends, she says. And there's so many questions they had that, what else could they have done? What more could they have done? And not nothing, she says, nothing. The slow process of you know, I try to heal. But the pain that I had, it, it, it's such a, a deep cut, a deep wounding, wounding, a deep wound, she says, a deep wound, a deep cut. And wanting that to just disappear, to just not simply not be there. was the motivation for what created the outward experience in my life. I think for many people, the cause of anorexia or any eating disorder, bulimia as well, I most certainly had some experiences with that, is not, it, it is personal, it is personal. There's not one prescription or formula as to how it happens or to how to stop it or why it happens. The why is such a painful question, isn't it? It's such a painful question and it doesn't have an answer. It does not have an answer. For me, from my experience, and as I am now quite, quite healthy as a soul, quite, quite happy as a spirit, it's not because my human life was miserable or I was unhappy in my human life either. I don't want people to think that, that I was just incredibly unhappy. 
but I did battle with depression. I did battle with an incredible amount of, of pressure, which now you would call anxiety. She says to me, she looks at me and says, now you, you would say the words anxiety, the term anxiety, and it's devastating. And sometimes you can manage it and sometimes you can't. And the way that I, I managed was to focus on the music through performances and to, you know, look at my brother and he would keep me grounded, in your words, keep me grounded, she says. And just pretend like we were just at home playing music and like no one else was there, right? to pretend that no one else was there. And I don't want to seem ungrateful or that the crowds upset me. I, 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 no, that's not really act. That's not quite accurate. It's it, the amount of love and the outpouring of love and appreciation for for the gifts of. There's so much gratitude, she says. There's so much gratitude. It was a gift to be able to share the music and to write is what she's saying. It was a gift. It was a gift. And, and it's not, she says, it's not lost on me. I know that. I, I deeply understand. And, and at the time, she says, and at the time, I understood that it was an incredible opportunity to perform and to have thousands and thousands of people not just to, not just purchase your albums and buy your records but to to show up and want to be part of it to see you sing the, the songs that they love and that that incredible amount of love is there's so much gratitude there and and it is it, it is overwhelming it is but that's not the reason my fans, the fans, did not cause me to be ill. There are a lot of things that, a lot of circumstances that contributed, she's saying, that contributed or added in. There were a lot of factors, is what she's pointing to, that created the environment or the situation of circumstance such that her body, and she says decay, like she's very graphic in the words that she uses um, because she recognizes that It was obvious, she said her outward appearance, it was obvious that she was not well. All right. Hmm. So something kind of sweet for you who are watching and um, Karen was when I was getting ready, I um, grabbed my coffee mug. I have a little bit of coffee this morning. Friends, coffee, cheers. Um, And... Yeah, I have an owl mug, a mug with an owl on it. And she said, oh, I love owls. <laughs> so she said, I love owls, she says. I thought that was so sweet. Owls are totem animals too. And you guys, for you who are watching, go Google that, look that up, totem animal owl, and find the meaning in that. Perhaps there's additional messages and information for you who are watching right now or listening about the owl totem. You'll have to check it out. Owl is one of my totems. That's why I have an owl mug. And so, all right. Interesting, huh? And she also said, I'm going to share with you. Um, she says, oh, tell them some more things. Um, she wanted to share just some little personal things, which I think is so fantastic. And, and having a session like this and having you share like just personal things, I think that people will love that. Thank you so much for that. And she likes, she says to me, um, when I was putting on some lotion, and it doesn't have a scent, it didn't have this scent, but she says, I love the smell of vanilla. She says vanilla, just sweet, you know, vanilla bean or like a crushed vanilla bean kind of scent, just really, just vanilla. I like the scent of vanilla, she says, so. All right, that's great. Um, Some other things did pop up, and I will share that with you all. A couple of other things did pop up, and um, I felt like she's with a brother in the afterlife. Now, I don't know how many brothers she had, or there's somebody else that's with her for sure. There's a male that's with her, and I I feel like it's a brother, but 
in her human life, her brother was very connected to her. It, she's letting me understand that um, he was very solid for her, like a rock for her kind of a thing. But she feels like she has that in the afterlife as well. And it feels kind of like the same vibration. So like a brother, it could be, it could even be a parent. Um, but I feel like there's another a male that's with her that's supporting her. So I don't, it's not negative or anything like that. It's like kind of protect, not protective, but um, she says, oh, you can say that. That's okay. Um, I also feel like there were, there were also two names that came forward. One was Michael and one was Brian. Michael and Brian. I have no idea who those people are. I mean, she says, they will. She says, they will. They'll know. And um, I feel like one of them plays the guitar. Is playing the guitar. One of these men is playing the guitar. Um, and... So I'm seeing her cross over. Usually I ask, I will ask spirit um, in our sessions about what it felt like to leave your body and what it felt like to arrive into the afterlife. But she's showing me kind of the house before and I feel like she's living with someone. There's somebody else in the house. It might be I'm her mother. I, it's really interesting because I feel like, I feel her very young. Like she, the and I don't want to, I'm not trying to be, um, I want to make sure I'm being very polite too, of course, but um uh, kind of immature, almost like um, mentality, like uh, immature. I don't, that's not the right word. Um, just maybe very connected to your family. Maybe that's the way. Very connected because I feel very connected to her mom and I feel like her brother's kind of like in charge of everything. And I don't know where dad is. I don't necessarily see dad, um, but I feel like a connection to mom. So I, I'm wondering if in her death, upon her death, that mom was there. Um, or mom found her or something. Cause I, and I feel like, did you know that you were getting to the point where you were, she says that my body was dying. Yes, I knew, I knew, I knew I wasn't well. It was so weak. It was so weak for days before. And, and it's funny, you know, she says, it's funny, you know, I actually had a really good day. And the day before she says, I had a really good day. And then it was just gone. Everything was over. Can you describe to us what it was like to cross over? And I feel like there's a heart, like the heart doesn't work. Like I feel like the heart doesn't work. Um, and the heart stops working kind of a thing. And I feel like you're unconscious. So I don't know if you were in a sleep state when you died or what. And I feel a lot of people around after, like when they're discovering that you left your body when the, the discovery was made that you were not here anymore. I feel like there's a lot of commotion and a lot of people around and stuff. Um, and I feel like your body being transported to a hospital is what it looks like. Um, it, oh, yeah. Okay, so, and then I see 1983, 83, 83, I see 83, 83. I don't know what that means, if that matters or what symbolism that it has to do with. Eight three and then space two years eight five, eight six, eighty three eighty five eighty six eighty three eighty five eighty six eighty three eighty five eighty six. Sometimes when I do calendar numbers timing dates, it's the one in between. So eighty three eighty five eighty six eighty four might be the big circle one. And then I see February like around Valentine's. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's birthday, anniversary, significant date for you. Um, and she says, it was really peaceful. It was very peaceful. I simply, I simply just, she says, slipped away. So when you, at the moment that you realized, this is funny, not conscious of your death, but cognizant that you weren't in your body anymore. Can you talk a little bit about what that felt like? what that was like for you, Karen. It was a bit unsettling. It was confusing at first because I could see, I was in the room and I could see and there was light coming in, but it didn't make sense to me why there would be so much light. Like a, there was a lot of light because it seemed darker earlier. And I wasn't sure if, I was, I was a bit, 
I wasn't sure. My mind wasn't really processing and probably because I didn't really have access to the mind at that point. However, there is certainly a sort of a feeling of just peacefulness, just, just peace. And there wasn't worry and or panic or anything of that sort. I didn't, I, I didn't have emotions like that. And, but I felt light. Like I look, I could look at myself and everything was just glowing. Like I could see my body and um, it looks like there's a woman next to her. Is that your mother? It's weird because I also feel like there's a nurse or somebody helping her in the room as well. So I'm, I'm not sure who the people are. I can't tell who these people are. And she says, so she's making me see what she sees, which is really pretty cool. Thank you for that. She says, oh, you're welcome. It, there's no like uh, features, like there's no hands, there's no, and it just looks down, look down and it looks like a white kind of gown going down, but it's all like a yellow white. It's gl glowing like, like an angel would be like just that yellow light. And that's, and there's this recognition, like she said, that I'm light. I'm not a person. I'm a light. I'm light I'm pure light, this yellow golden light. And then there was just this feeling of the presence of God because that's what I believed. She says, that's what I believed. And we were raised to believe in God and I felt that presence. And it does feel like a, a fatherly figure, a father, like a protector energy. You would say, you would say protector energy. And there was this, like, she's, I'm feeling it. And it just feels like just a stillness that's comfortable. That's how I would describe it. A stillness that's comfortable. And so then after, and she's showing me tons and tons of yellow flowers, like big yellow roses and almost looks like, like long stemmed, either long stemmed roses or like the floppy flowers that are long and yellow. Um, almost like big tulips or something, but I'm not good with flowers. It could be lilies, just big yellow flowers. Um, I think she's, I think she's referring to her funeral and it looks like this big white, like, I don't want to say hearse. I hate that. Oh, I hate that name, but this big white vehicle and just her. And she says her family wasn't surprised, but they were so sad. And that's one thing she remembers is the, that they were so sad, so sad. And she says, I was there. I was part of the experience. I think people would want to know that, she says. And she shows me herself in a big hat, this big hat and this pretty thin little dress with like, like lightweight material, like an organza or something really, just lightweight, cheery, and this hat, this pretty hat. And it's like pale colors, like a, a pale pink or lavender, kind of a, la it might be lavender, lavender and like a, the pink is more like a mauve color. And she said, I always loved, I always loved mauve. She says mauve, I love mauve color. It's like pink, but it's a different, it's, it is closer to purple. She says it is closer to purple. It's like a lavender. That's what mauve is, it's a little more lavender, more, more kind of subdued. And, and I really like that color that I really like that and there's like a sash on her dress that's that color is what it looks like it's really pretty it's so pretty and there's just a, a softness I guess you would say about this whole feeling and can you all feel this take a moment to give yourself permission to really feel this energy that's the point of these channels my friends those who are watching is to feel and with Karen Karen Carpenter is here and she's sharing how it felt being there as a spirit at her funeral. And this will hopefully be something you can relate to as well with your loved ones and having the experiences of attending memorial services and things too. And, and maybe it will give you some comfort in knowing as well. 
I'm feeling the energy, just, just the softness. Is there anything else? Thank you. So for, let me just make sure that I thank you. A lot of gratitude for this. This is the first time we've talked and I don't, um, I, the song, um, I sort of feel like I grew up with you a little bit, um, driving in the car with my mom. I remember the, on the radio and, um, playing, she would play records too at home and big, big stereo console thing. And, um, the Carpenters, you know, we've only just begun. And, um, the, the song about close to you, that's what it is close to you. And the close to you song is one of my cues for when my dad is near me. So from the afterlife, when I start to hear the lyrics of that song of yours, that, you know, why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near, just like me, they long to be close to you. And there's a, 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 there's a part of that song that's really special to me personally. And it's, it's the part of on the day that you were born, the angels got together and decided to create a dream come true. And it talks about, it says something about how they sprinkled moon dust in your hair and golden starlight in your high, eyes of blue. I think it's, I may have screwed that up, but that's how it's beautiful. And it makes me feel like when I hear that, I know my dad's near because it's like this energy of love for your child. It's what comes forward. And it means a lot to me. I, you can feel that obviously, right? And so I, I have wanted to chat with you, Karen, but I wasn't sure when the right time would be. And I knew that you were rather soft-spoken and my energy is not usually soft-spoken. So I wasn't sure <laughs> at what point we would be able to connect. But so I thank you for coming today and being part of Above Life channel. I, I do really appreciate it. Thank you. And she says, thank you. Wow, this is Bridget. <laughs> You've just been watching or listening to a channel with Karen Carpenter, the Karen Carpenter in the afterlife. So now it's time for you to reflect, share your comments below. If you liked this channel, if you really felt the energy flowing through, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up this video and share it with someone. If there's someone that you know that's a fan of the Carpenters, please share it with them as well. Remember, remember the purpose of this experience here at Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit. And we do that with these authentic channeling videos. And every week there's a new video with new insights, new advice from the afterlife reflections that are so valuable to us as people from the spirit. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching today.